right. God bless you. Well, Pastor Boswell. Yes. We want to welcome you here to um, the Facebook Live or Facebook Live where we're presenting Times of Empowerment. We're just waiting um, to some more more join us, join in with us, and uh, we're excited about being here. A little tired. A little yes, tired. A little but, bit tired. A little bit tired, but um, God is good, and, and we thank God for mm -hmm. um, uh, for being here. How you doing, Brother Jackson? Good to see yes. you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Ah, Sister Gilbert, our mm -hmm. Sister Arvana. Um, listen, what we want to do tonight while people are coming in, um, we want to try something. And I, we hope that it works. If it cuts us off, uh, we'll just reboot again. But we want to try to see if someone wants to ask ask a question, ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, Sister, Sister uh, Pat, Pastor Pat Jones is joining us, thank God. Pastor Michael Bell, God bless you. Good to see you all. But if you would like to ask a question uh, live with us, mm -hmm. we're going to attempt to bring you on with us where you can ask uh, your uh, your question live. How you doing, Brother Jarman? God bless you. Good to see you. Uh, so, but it, it, and if you would like to ask your question, just send us a, um, a, a we can see you right down there, send us a message, and we'll attempt to pull you in where you can ask your question. Uh, Right with us, right live with us, and uh, and everything. So uh, we we had hoped that this would be available, and it's been available for a while. But we're not sure how it, how it works because we haven't done so it yet. Just doing a trial. So we want to do a trial here tonight with someone who uh, want, who will come on, and we'll repeat this again a little later. Someone who wants to ask a question live with us, we'll we will see if we can bring you uh, bring you on camera with us uh, and everything. So. Uh, but we thank God again. We thank God for, for being here. We thank God for uh, the, the teaching or the subject that we're going to deal with yes. on tonight. But before we do that, uh, we want to want to talk to you about a couple of things. Um, and one of the things we want to talk about is, is the books that we believe that will will be a blessing. And one of the things that we are absolutely excited about is, is the book that Pastor Flowers wrote. Um, again, it's Prophetic Ministry Empowerment, Keys to a Successful Prophetic Ministry. Um, uh, this book established the school of prophets that pastor flowers has uh and it is and I, and I say this every time we talk about this book i'm not saying it because she wrote it i'm saying it because it's a fact uh it's an awesome empowering powerful tool. prophetic tool mm -hmm. uh that can be used to in, in to to help empower and instruct those that not only uh feel that god is moving them into the prophetic ministry uh but that uh want to know about the prophetic ministry because uh, it, it's not it's not only important for the prophet and the prophetess to know what they're doing and know how to to walk uh, walk in the prophetic manner. It's also beneficial for those that are in the congregations yes. and in the ministries that's in the church. It's yeah. important for people to understand how to receive a prophetic message. Absolutely. And how not only to receive it but also how to judge it. Absolutely. How to understand and be whether respectful it's, in yes, it. Yes. Yes. How to understand whether it's is is actually for you and how to understand whether it's talking about right then season or a season to come absolutely. so it it, it 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 has been a blessing absolutely so blessing. again it's the gold book you can go on amazon.com and you can uh you can certainly order this book and i, I certainly believe it'll be a blessing to you individually blessing to your ministry and blessing to those who feel that god uh um, is is moving them into the ministry of, of, of the prophetic ministry um we don't need a lot of mess we need yes. To be able to hear from God and be able to to uh, know that God's leading us. How you doing, uh, Sister Juanita? Uh, I want to say this quickly to you. Um, yes, yes. Uh, I want to say this quickly to you. Um, also, we have four books here, yes. and I, this is the one that I'm, I'm really I'm excited about all of them. But um, we are we have we are going out of time out of a time that I believe that uh, a lot of people are being challenged by this. Uh, this uh, this spirit and that's the spirit of depression. This yes. book here is the dark yes. struggle uh, struggles of depression yes. mm -hmm. in our emotional, mental, and uh, and spiritual lives. Uh, this book deals with and we got a video on on, on my Facebook. It's mm -hmm. on Pastor Flower uh, page as well that gives you details, some outlines about uh, what mm -hmm. our books are about. But this book deals with uh, the challenges of depression. And yes. how it affects mm -hmm. not just the person that is going through depression, mm -hmm. but how it affects the family, how it affects yes. the body, yes. how it affects relationships and yes. stuff, and how it affects your spiritual walk. Mm -hmm. And 
I, I just believe, and it didn't just, it doesn't just out, outline it. It gives spiritual medicines. Yeah. It gives, uh, um, uh, you know, how to how to deal with, it, how to attack it, and how to help those how who help those, are in yeah. families yeah. that have a family member that's yeah. dealing with depression. But sometimes you can feel hopeless. Oh, you sad. know, you don't know what to do. You know, they're going through something. You don't know what to say. Sometimes you don't know. You know, you don't want to make it worse. You want to right. try to help them. But like the more you try to help them, the more you know, gets, yes. Yeah. And you're praying. You're Absolutely. praying. Prayer definitely does work. Absolutely. But you want to, you know, that that's an awesome book. That is an Absolutely. awesome book. You know, again, it's the dark, uh, the dark struggles of depression in our emotional and mental spirit, uh, and spiritual lives. And on the back of it, I got a subtitle: seeing the seeing uh, seeing the brightness uh, of life again. And that's what this book helps mm -hmm. uh, uh, helps us to those who are dealing with depression, and being challenged, helps you to know how to get to that light, uh, brightness of life again. Next one is the art of relationships. Singles, are you ready? Uh, this book, yeah. so, self-explanatory. It helps those who are single, who want to discover what a healthy and, and, and God or, uh, uh, desired relationship yeah. is, um, this will bless you. You want to be in a relationship, but then after a while, around, you know what, I need a little bit more working, a little Absolutely. bit more tweaking on me Absolutely. before I take all of me and that's, that's, <laughs> into yes. a relationship. And that's what that book helps you to understand. <laughs> Next one is the securing covenants of your relationships, putting everything on the table uh, for clarity. Uh, this relationship deals with both singles and um, mm -hmm. uh, marital relationships. It's more heavier towards mm -hmm. uh, marital relationships, mm -hmm. but uh, those who are single going into relationships can certainly benefit from this book. Mm -hmm. Again, securing the covenant of your relationships, putting it all on the table for clarity. And the last one I want to talk about is the intimacy of a real and healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Clarity, That's openness, true. and honesty. Mm -hmm. Yes, we teach a lot from this book. Uh, clarity, and openness, and honest, honest attention is the key. Uh, this book is again it's heavy on uh, marital relationships, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it certainly can be beneficial to those who are in a serious relationship and uh, and, and, are, and, are, and are more than likely moving towards marriage. So again, this one is the intimacy of a healthy of intimacy of real and healthy relationships. Let me slow down. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Clarity, openness, and honest attention is the key. Mm -hmm. And all our books can be gotten on Amazon.com. And if you would want some mm -hmm. more information. Um, about the books that we're talking about, uh, we put up a video mm -hmm. that has an outline of uh, of the books that we that, that we've written, mm -hmm. and I, I just certainly believe that these books will certainly be a blessing to you. Um, you can go to Amazon.com, put her name in, put the titles of the books, and you will see it. There's a link, matter of fact, in the video uh, that you can hit uh, mm -hmm. at, in the comment section that will take you right to Amazon.com. Yes. You can put in our names, yes. put in the book titles yes. and stuff, and you can find, you can get those books. But remember, just in case you run across the blue book, that blue book is not, this is the updated book. Mm -hmm. So make sure you have the gold book when you're ordering Pastor Flowers' book, mm -hmm. Prophetic Ministry Empowerment, Keys to Successful Prophetic Ministry, that you make sure you look for the big gold book mm -hmm. because that's it's the... It's big enough so you can make your little notes there. I like definitely. to write all over my books. And yes, she does. <laughs> she does. So, you know, Apostle, you was talking a while ago about the relationship books and things you... You see so much now where relationships, especially godly relationships, mm -hmm. are under attack. Absolutely. And you find so many uh, inner squabbles and dissensions mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. happening in relationships. And when the inner squabbles and the dissensions happen, it makes it hard for the flow to happen. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. it's hard to move forward when you have the inner struggle. Most definitely. You know, inner struggle going on on the inside of the house. No matter what's happening on the outside, no matter how much you're smiling, no matter how much you look like the perfect couple, if there's inner struggles and inner squabblings that's going on in the house, it's going to hinder your Most flow. Definitely. It's Most going definitely. to be a breach in your flow. You're not going to be able definitely. to you know, do the things that you need to do. And I believe that that's why God is sending so many messages I, I, I do. concerning I do. relationships. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's just as important for us to relate to one another to God mm -hmm. and not bypass each other mm -hmm. trying to get to God. Mm -hmm. If we're going to relate a message, and I think it's, it's, it's also important for those of us who are in places of authority or responsible for uh, taking a message to, to anyone, that we show up our relationship. That's why we, yes. were, we took so long uh, on, on the last couple of broadcasts. We did, I think, three or four broadcasts well, dealing with family yes. because too long we skip past the dif dysfunction that's in our families. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can't make people change. Now, I'm not talking about that. Mm -hmm. But we can't ignore that there's a need to be changed. How you doing, uh, Sister Smith, Anthony okay. Smith? Uh, but we can't ignore that there's a need for change. Yeah. 
We can't just ignore it. Mm -hmm. So when we do our best, when we get the tools to do our best, and people decide still not to change, mm -hmm. then the weight of change or the blood, so to speak, is not on our hands anymore. But we can't ignore it. We can't just not do anything. Mm -hmm. And then we get getting back to now relationships. Now, uh, this perspective or the, this message deals uh, uh, um, mostly or in a heavy manner with singles. That, and, yes. you know, because uh, we're t we, we, we see so many relationships where there wasn't enough information, there wasn't enough work, there wasn't enough people doing what's necessary to make sure that I'm not just rushing in a relationship because my flesh is, is yelling or because, um, it, you know, I'm tired of seeing everybody else in a relationship and I'm single and I'm by myself and stuff. And then the enemy creates this, and we, you're going to hear us talk about this, creates this needy, yes. this strong atmosphere yes. of need that I need to have somebody in my I life. Need to be in the you know, I need somebody to complete me. I need somebody yes. to make me whole. And these are not good things or good foundations to develop a relationship. Mm -hmm. And one of the things uh, um, uh, that we felt that this was most important because we're getting into a season now where uh, I don't Bishop Mola, where um, relationships are emphasized. You know, uh, where you were talking about people getting into relationships and people who are in relationships and those who are not in relationships are feeling incomplete or feeling rushed to hurry up and develop something because you don't want to go through another holiday season where relationships are, are, are being celebrated by yourself. And sometimes, and I think we said it before the broadcast, uh, and that analogy that you used, that example that you used, sometimes it, loneliness is not as bad as you think it is when you compare it to being having somebody in your life and still lonely. Yeah, I called it. Uh, it's like putting on a shoe that's too small for your feet, but yet still you wear it. Because it look good. Because it look good. Look good. Because it look good. You know, so we don't want we don't want people, uh, and we want to encourage people. That's a possibility. Oh, oh, possibility. Eleven belly. Yeah. Oh, how you doing, Pastor Eleven belly? Good to see you. How about them cowboys? <laughs> Amen. Um, we don't want uh, we we want to encourage people. Don't just develop a relationship because it looks like everybody else is doing well in a relationship or how good other people look in a relationship. Because here's what you don't know. You don't know how, um, you know, what they had to go through to yes. get get their relationship to where you see it yes. at now. You don't know how many devils they had to defeat, oh, not just on the outside, but the ones on the inside too. Mm -hmm. Amen. This uh, question is, when is your next relationship and marriage conference uh, seminar? Well, we're working on something right now. Something right now. We'll be putting it up soon. Yes. So keep an eye out. We're Absolutely. working on something right now. Absolutely. We're working on something right now. So we don't want you, we don't want us to have this a mythical ideal that there is no work that needs to be done coming to the relationship, mm -hmm. developing it into something that that defines a relationship, and then getting into a marital relationship. Mm -hmm. There's work has to be done, both in the in the atmosphere and process of getting there and in ourselves as we begin to develop this relationship. Mm -hmm. So this is why we feel it's important mm -hmm. to let's deal with this thing. Let's be honest about these things. Let's work at it and stuff. And slow sometimes you gotta pull the reins on your horse and say, mm -hmm. hold up for a minute. Horse, hold up for a minute. You're rushing me to a place that when we get there, I won't be mostly equipped, ready, or finished when we arrive. Yep. Amen. Okay. All right, huh? you want to... okay, the title of tonight is The Season of Emotional Misdirections That Lead to Bad Relationship Decisions and Connections. Mm -hmm. Don't have to hurry into something that is real. You don't have to hurry into something that is real. When the goal is just to find a good woman or a good man and not discover where and how deep that goodness that you think you have discovered is, you will, without emotional honesty and clarity, rush to make sure you don't lose that good thing you think you found. Absolutely. Now, Pastor Flowers had said earlier, she was reading it earlier in, the, in that title where it says, you don't have to rush into anything that's real. Mm -hmm. so, so many times, uh, Pastor Flowers, and, and I think that's mm -hmm. that's something that we need to emphasize in, because so many times, uh, people will find someone that feels good or sounds good. And I don't mean physically. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it feel good emotionally, they feel good in the atmosphere. They feel like they fit in a whole lot of mm -hmm. things that you want in your life and stuff. And you feel like you have to hurry up and, 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 and nail that thing down because yeah. if you don't, you may lose it. Yeah. And the bottom line lose is... this deal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is, is this. You don't have to rush into anything Nothing. that's real. Nothing. Nothing if that, it's real, it'll wait on you. Absolutely. It'll, oh, it, yes. It will let you get to know it. Absolutely. It will let you get to identify exactly what it's all about. Absolutely. Now, if anything tries to rush you, rush you, Pastor Flowers, it might they be... They do it for a reason. Yes. It might be they want you to hurry up and close this deal before what's actually in them may start to manifest because it's so, so long that someone can pretend 
a hold back some of the issues and struggles that's in them. Now let me sh let me say this also, Pastor Flowers, and I, I want you to jump in on this too. Okay. I'm not saying that e even in the development of a real real relationship that you won't come across some things that may be bumps in the road. Yeah, but that's just a bumps. In but the road. that's bumps it's in not the a crater. Right, and stuff. So if it's real, you're gonna come across those things that cultivate some things or stir up some things in us that we need to deal with. Mm -hmm. And the bumps in the road, you both will be willing to handle it. Absolutely. Sit down and deal with it. Absolutely. But when you have someone that's in a relationship that wants to rush you mm -hmm. and stuff and get, get past the time that would that they would normally uh, manifest deal breakers, relationship breakers, it's because they're not willing to work on the things that will make both of you whole in the relationship. And if they start to threaten you to say, well, you know, I, I'm just going to move on. You know what you need to do? Get up and open the door. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tell them, say, step. Absolutely. Absolutely. Keep it moving. Absolutely. Because if I can't get to know you and what you are about without you threatening to move on, how I know you're not going to move on anyway. Absolutely. So, absolutely. So, move. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So, we need to be able to uh, take the time that we need, need, need to not just know them, mm -hmm. but to know ourselves and how we yes. fit. How into their life. How do you two fit together? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to rush. Anything that's real will stay there. They will, they will wait the time that's necessary for both of you to be to tr trust what you're seeing and that you can work with. Nothing worse than walking around with mixed match shoes on, Ooh. especially the wrong feet. Oh, my God. Yes, sir. And don't so fit, you, too. And they don't fit. Mismatch and too tight. <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to hide and get some relief at yeah. the same time and that's what these kind of relationships when we hurry up into the relationship and don't know how they fit it's like walking around in mixed match shoes yes. that don't fit they don't fit and trying to go in the same direction absolutely so and let me say this quickly too uh if you're out there and you want to talk directly to us to ask a question mm -hmm. please let us know as you as you come come down and we'll see if we can bring you in with us we want to try this so hopefully someone will uh will uh, have a question they want to talk directly to us uh, and stuff because we want to try this out to see mm -hmm. how this works all right uh great uh, okay the problem is that this rush not only causes you to ignore that the goodness that you may that you see may not be the goodness that makes a relationship strong real progressive but a goodness that is forged by a need that is either purely emotional or physical you know what pastor flowers uh it's like kids you know, when, when uh, they have all these uh, uh, toys before Christmas mm -hmm. that they got last Christmas or for their birthday. And when they first got them, they were playing with those toys and stuff, and they were having, having fun with those toys. Mm -hmm. But when that season uh, was over, mm -hmm. um, they put those toys in the corner, and they got excited about some new toys. And they, 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 their behavior, some of them behavior was able to uh, change. They were able to be as good as they need to be because they know as, as good as they are, mm -hmm. probably be, they can get more toys mm -hmm. and they can get more things they can play with and stuff. So they learn how to mm -hmm. deal with their behavior for the want of something, mm -hmm. not for the maturing into something, mm -hmm. but for the want of something. So many times you can find in relationships that men and women know how uh, to, uh, to discipline their behavior for the want of something, exactly. but not to nurture it for the maturing into something. Exactly. So you, we have to be uh, uh, slow enough and be aware that uh, when, when, we're, when, we're, when we're dealing oh, with... Oh, that was a question I was asking. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you wanted to read some no. and stuff. Uh, slow enough to understand that, or, or at least find out uh, if this person is able to mature in something and not just being able to be good enough to get something, mm -hmm. to get your attention, to get you into the line. And then some even to get, get, you know, get physically with you. And I don't mean uh, uh, violently, but you know, in a way that, mm -hmm. that's, that's not appropriate for those who are not married. But, uh, but the bottom line is, the good that you may see in them may be purely based on that they want something. Yeah. Not that they can yeah. mature into something. Yes, yeah. honey. Sometimes we need to ask ourselves the question. Mm -hmm. Ask them the question. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to get to know me? Whoa. Why do you want my number? Absolutely. You know, what made Absolutely. you, you've you seen me for a while. What made you step up now and ask me for my number? Right. What about me do you want to get to know? If they're mm -hmm. hesitant to answer that. Maybe they don't know. Absolutely. Maybe they don't want to tell you it's all physical. Mm -hmm. Then we need to ask our ourselves the question: Why do I want to get to know them? Absolutely. Why do I want to give them a number? Right. Why do I want you know find out if that you know why you want that? Right. And if it's for the right reasons, you know, then go forward. But if it's not, the think about 
the process, you're absolutely right. right. The process of relationships can't be a whole guessing game. Mm -hmm. You're not going to know, you may not know all the answers. No, but uh, enough. But you need to know enough to give you a safe reason why you're going to go exactly. forward. You need to know that the person that you're allowing into your life is worth spending your lifetime yes. to get to know them and for them to get to know you. You don't yes. need to shortchange yourself. You don't need to be so needy or so hungry for relationship, care, concern, and attention that you just give in to anything that sounds good and you don't even know if they're mature enough, if they're healthy enough, or if their motives are right to be yes. able to carry that on to a nurturing relationship. Exactly. And stuff. Exactly. And you need to investigate that. I know, you know what? And please don't let the devil tell you that, you know, people who are married just say that because mm -hmm. they're already married. Mm -hmm. No, don't let the devil tell you that. Because what, what that will do is make you give up on mm -hmm. your standards and what you need to do to see if this person qualifies to stay with you for the rest of yes. your life. Yes. So don't let the devil tell you that we only say that because we're already married. Mm -hmm. Because that's not true. We say that because that's a fact. You know, we don't get, no marriage is successful if people don't get to know each other and what they're getting going into the marriage. Yeah. You, yeah. you don't, you know, and that's what you need to do. Yes. Oh, don't worry about your misspelling. We, we all right with that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, meaning it is self-centered and need-based. I like when you put that there. Mm -hmm. Self-centered and need-based. And the reason why it feels like it's a good fit is because that is what your emotions and behavior of hurrying into the relationship is designed from. Absolutely. Now, it's if on both. Yeah. Great, 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 great. If you're If you're going into the relationship because of need-based mm -hmm. or because of, of, of self-centeredness mm -hmm. or whatever, and then you meet somebody just like that, you think it's a perfect fit mm -hmm. because Absolutely. that's what you go in there for. Absolutely. They minister, they minister to what you say you need. Yeah. They're ministering to, to you, know, I, man, you know, I'm tired of being alone. Yeah. I'm tired of being by myself. I'm tired of going, I'm tired of sleeping by myself. I'm tired of, I'm tired of, you know, being, being alone and stuff. I, I want somebody in my life too. That does not make a good husband. No, it doesn't. You know, Love just like, wife. just like saying, there are some things that we say we need mm -hmm. that after we get it, we realize how much we did not need it. Yeah. And then sooner or later, because of that heightened emotion and after we get used to it, we're no longer, we're no mm -hmm. longer interested anymore. It goes somewhere else. Yeah. Your relationships and feelings are the same way that are not honest, uh, uh, mature and pure. If you move off of selfishness, if you move off of just neediness, and you're going to hear us talk about, there's a difference between need and neediness. Not, 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 that's not just a play on words. There's a difference, and we have to understand the difference when we're dealing with relationships. You know, if you're, uh, uh, now I'm going to go ahead myself, and we're going to talk about that in a few, few seconds. But again, let me repeat this. If you're on here and you want to you come on and talk to us directly, no problem. You want to come on and talk to us directly. You want to ask us a question, you want to uh, come on live with us, then let us know down the bottom, and we will certainly bring you on live, because again, we want we want to uh, we want to test this out yeah. to see how it is bringing somebody on live to ask a question. So if you're, if you're again, if you're out there and you're listening, and you want to talk to us live, you have a question you want to ask us, then let us know, send us a note uh, you know, down the bottom, we, we're reading right here, and we will certainly uh, bring you on live with us and, uh, and, and, and have, have that dialogue. The Pastor Flowers, uh, um, the enemy has tricked so many people to believe that the greatest perception of when you're ready to get married is or get into a relationship is when you're tired of being alone, mm -hmm. when you're tired of being by yourself, when you're frustrated, you know, just being single. And the enemy will tell you that, the enemy will make you think that it means you're ready to be a, no. be a part of a relationship. Yeah. And I've, we've said this so many times. If you can't stay in your own company, if you get tired of being around you, what are you going to do if you can't mature past that with somebody that's around with you 24-7 and challenges everything or just about everything that you say or do? And I don't mean it negatively. They're, they're going to question. You're going to, have to, you're going to have to be accountable for what you do in that marriage and that relationship and what you do every day with that person. Mm -hmm. If you can't stand yourself being around, being with yourself being like that, how are you going to handle somebody else that's going to be in your life and stuff? And they're going to, ask, they're going to challenge you about things that you're going to do. You're going to have to be accountable with them. Yeah. So I'm saying to us is don't rush to get into something that you haven't matured from, when you haven't matured from, where you need to be healthy enough to give them something that's complete. And I'm talking about what ourselves. Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. Huh? And don't rush to get into something because you couldn't get into something else. Right. It didn't oh. work. You, you you wanted to be with John, and it didn't work with John, and John didn't pay you no attention that you know that you really wanted. So John seemed to have gone on, on with Sarah, 
And so, well, there's Ebert over there. He's mm. okay. He's fine a little bit. <laughs> um, so I might as well just go on date him. You know, I ain't going to be by myself. So there you are being unfair with Edward because you know that Absolutely. you didn't really want Edward. You wanted John. Yes. You know, and vice versa. Edward didn't really want you. He wanted Sarah. But right. Sarah went on with somebody else. And so he don't want to be lonely. So he'll date you. And he'll never really commit to you. And nope. you will end up having all these emotional loneliness because there's a part of him that you can't reach and that you can't touch and that he can't touch you because you weren't the one he really Absolutely. wanted. Absolutely. And you were with someone. And I need yes. to hear this. There was no, there was no uh, misstep on those words. You're with someone, but you feel the same kind. Of, and sometimes yeah. it's even more extreme. Yeah. You feel the same kind of loneliness with someone that you felt when you were by yourself. Yeah. And listen at the two things. Listen at how they're common. You were lonely with yourself because you didn't learn how to celebrate your, your singleness or enjoy your own company. Now you're lonely with someone else. Why? Because you cannot enjoy their company yeah. because they don't give you good company. No. And you can't celebrate no. anything with them because there's nothing that's been defined. You're being emotionally starved. Absolutely. There Absolutely. is so many singles, so many people, even in marriages, mm -hmm. that are emotionally starved because they're person they're in a relationship with it has locked up emotions Absolutely. and they can't really express their emotions to them the emotional intimacy i'm not talking about sex right, right. now the emotional intimacy that's needed to build a strong relationship is not there because somewhere along the line somebody got locked up absolutely and one of the worst things you said something earlier pastor flowers that i think especially uh, that we we all need to uh, think a little bit more about and that is um don't jump from something no. and jump into something because yeah. something did not work. Because it didn't work out. And that's most important, not just from where singles, uh, you, you, you've been dating, you were dating someone and you either found out that this person wasn't faithful, this person wasn't real, or they weren't, weren't or the person. They were cheating on you. They were cheating you know. and, and so you end up going into, going into another relationship when someone shows you uh, uh, another kind of characteristic that seem more safer. Mm -hmm. You got to be the same way if you, same way. If, if, if you were divorced. Yeah. If you, if, uh, if you, if the married person that you the person that you were married to uh, was uh, was unfaithful, uh, they no longer wanted to be married to you anymore. Uh, they were distracted by what other other, other issues mm -hmm. that made them no longer a good partner in your marital relationship. Yeah. And then y'all got divorced, and then all of a sudden you find yourself feeling even lonelier than you was before you even when you, when you first got married married mm -hmm. because now uh, you've gotten used to having someone in your life. Yes. And so uh, now they're no longer in your life, and this space that's now empty seems even greater than the space before you got married. Why is it, can you hold right mm -hmm. here? Why is it when that space gets empty, there's a push to hurry up and try to fill it? Because, you know, it's like, okay, I, I gotta fill that space. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that space is empty. Mm -hmm. um, he's done going on, or she's done going on, and I gotta get somebody in my life. I can't be by myself. You know, why don't we slow walk that thing? Get to, the healing and the deliverance and, and all of those things that we need to have to help deal with the baggage and the residue from the past relationship so we'd be good right. to go into another relationship. Two, two things that, that, that could happen, and I'm slowing down because I, I found myself talking real mm -hmm. fast. So two things could, could be evident here. And if we're not careful, anybody can fall into it when it comes from mm -hmm. a divorce. And that could be one, an attitude of competitiveness. Yes. One has gone on, seemed to be go, going on and pressing on. And stuff, and it looks like you're lagging back, and you can't find nobody to mm -hmm. bring in your life. Mm -hmm. So you get in your mind that you may be thinking that this person thinks that they were the last thing or the best thing that ever entered your life, and nobody else wanted you. So that's why you by yourself. But look at them now; they got somebody else in their life. Well, notice this: when they violated, when they violated the marriage, if it was a violation, then you can rest assured that anything they got in their life now is a violation to the plan of God exactly. as well. So you don't need to compete with the, yeah. their violation. To find, because you're not going to find someone lawful and right in your life. So you don't need to compete with them. Yeah. And secondly, what happens is that you can get used to having someone in your life. Mm -hmm. You can get so used to having someone in your life that it feels like you're being neglected when you can't find, when no one's no longer in your life. So you want to hurry up and fill that void because it's more than just it's more than just someone there that you can talk to. Mm -hmm. Now you have to so, have someone to occupy you or, or preoccupy you mm -hmm. from a feeling of loneliness. And if you're not careful, from what feels like a spirit of rejection. Mm -hmm. So you got to get a hold of these these passions, these feelings, because they're also equal to being harried mm -hmm. into a relationship, being harried into a marriage, being harried into something else. And there's a lot of people that you know that, that, that either want to prove themselves 
or they or they either want to feel like uh, they're, they're they're wanted again or they got it. Mm -hmm. You know, I got it. See, I got me another woman. I got me another man. Mm -hmm. I know I, I ain't I lost it. I have value. Yes, you know. I have value. Mm -hmm. And these things force you to make decisions about relationships that you're neither ready for mm -hmm. and that you haven't gotten over for what the last relationship did to you mm -hmm. to be able to be healthy enough mm -hmm. to, uh, to develop a new relationship. So we have to be careful. Don't let the enemy fool you. Don't let the enemy uh, 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 manipulate you into feeling like you have to prove anything to anybody uh, by getting into a relationship exactly. that you're not ready for. Exactly. And as I said, you, that's a good point you exactly. hit on. Exactly. Especially family and friends, too. Absolutely. Don't let people be trying to hook you up Absolutely. because you're by yourself. You gotta live you know, with it. You got you gotta live with it. When you get oh, married, oh Johnny, he's a mm -hmm. nice man. Oh Mary, she's a nice woman. That nice as a friend, right? But have you been in a relationship yeah, with? Absolutely. Her? You know that's yeah. a different. That's two that different dynamics. You know, <laughs> you, 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 a friend relationship and a relationship relationship is two different things. You might think he's nice because he's friendly, or she's nice because she's friendly. Have you ever dated him? Absolutely. And if you have, you don't want them. That's a. <laughs> <laughs> if you dated them, then why you trying to get them? That's to right. Me? That's right. There's a difference when you said it, Pastor. There's a difference, son. When you're observing someone's kindness, it's a much different. It's much different yeah. when you have to date this person and you have to get to know this person and you have to challenge some things. And I don't mean negatively, and I don't mean aggressively, but there are some things that in, in a growing process in the development of a relationship mm -hmm. that feels like challenges where you're asking this person to, to allow you to discover things about, yeah. about them that was only secret to, to them. If that's a problem. Of them, you know, when, when they know you want to discover things about mm -hmm. them, you want to get to know them, you want to get to know their world, so to mm -hmm. speak, you know, because you do need to get to know Absolutely. their world a little bit, Absolutely. you know, because you're going to be a part of their world if it goes on, you know, further, Absolutely. you know, and if they are hesitant about you getting to know them and getting to know their world a little bit, you know, you need need to put on the brakes a little Most bit, definitely. you know, Most definitely. maybe not slam the emergency brake, right. but you know, you start you put on, on that regular brake, yeah. lift up off that gas. To yeah, try to get you go fast, push on those brakes to slow you down up. just a little bit. But let, let's get this emphasize this a little bit more too. That person in your family that may be a witness to this man or woman being a good person, they may they may be good. It may be real. It may yeah, be honest with their feeling. Yeah. And what I mean by it, it may not be complete in in, in describing this person because they don't know all about this person. But they may be real and honest mm -hmm. about the, about their testimony about how good a person this is in. Mm -hmm. But you said it earlier, but you still got to take this at, at, at the value of how they have discovered yeah. it. Yeah. It may be just by observation. And it may be, in all reality, they may also be able to tell you, look, this person has been good. They've been hurt by other people. Oh, other people yeah. have ran, has, 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 has did this or that to yeah. them. And it may be a reality. But here's another thing you have to take in this, too. They just know them by observation. That's all they, they don't know them. For, uh, um, didn't, uh, date them. Uh, didn't date them. Mm -hmm. They don't know what was going on in the relationship and the other emotional challenges mm -hmm. that are under the layer of their observation. Mm -hmm. But here, secondly, they also you have to add to this is they know them by the pain that they went through in the relationships that they were ran over. Mm -hmm. But they don't know how far that pain is away from them and starting a new relationship. Mm -hmm. So it, it's good to understand that a person is faithful enough that. When they got when they got involved with somebody that hurt them, they didn't try to hurt them back. Yeah, okay. they, they they weren't you know they they or they didn't run out on them or they didn't try to get them back. They just okay. tried to move on. But you also need to know is how far in them moving along are they before you yeah. try to start yeah, yeah, yeah. a new relationship with yeah. them. And your 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 bestest friend or your closest relative can't tell you how far they've gone on. That's true. They can just observe and say. This person's working on themselves. They're a good person. They're a hard, they're a hard worker. They come to church. They pray. They're a prayer warrior. They, 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 we can understand but it. But if they're still keeping tabs on their ex, keep it moving. Right. And if they're still riding by the ex's house, even though they say, no, I don't want him. I don't want her. But you're still keeping tabs on them. Mm -hmm. Something's wrong. You're still trying to find out information about them. Something's wrong. Right. You want to find out, you know, where they're going at, what's doing it, what's going on in their life. You know everything. Something's wrong with that. But, but you know, yeah, and that's true. Yeah. But I'm not even talking about the person that does that. Okay. I'm talking about the person that's legitimately saying, has physically shown the evidence that they're moving on. But, but mm -hmm. we still, you still have to try to find out if they have emotionally been able to move on. Yes. That inside they're not struggling with okay. anger. They're not struggling with, okay. man, why this person did this to do this to me? Mm -hmm. And they're not, they're not angry with the with the person. They're not they're not holding a grudge, and we don't need to understand this. I'm not saying they're holding a grudge, but it has had an impact of, of pain on them so much so 
that they even question their decisions about relationships. They don't say anything to anybody, but they question their own their own integrity towards their own choices about relationships mm -hmm. and stuff. You know, they know this person that that is that has did something to them, or this person wasn't faithful to the relationship. They understand that this person was no good. They don't want anything else to do with them. They don't care what they're doing with their life, and they don't mean that something bad happened to them. But they're just not going to waste any time trying to discover or footprint this person's life because mm -hmm. they actually want to move on. Mm -hmm. But you need to know while uh, this friend or this relative is advertising the, the virtues in this person, yeah. you need to know that what you have observed may be actually good, mm -hmm. but you need to know if it's real. If it's real. You need to know how deep it goes yeah. and how far it can take. Yeah. You can take both of We rich. tell people all the time when they come for counseling, uh, we, you know, uh, we have our little format and different things that we mm -hmm. do. We tell them point blank, we don't want the right answers. We want the real answers. Absolutely. Are you really ready Absolutely. to move forward? Absolutely. You know, don't come and say, yes, I'm ready to move forward. When in actuality, deep down, you're not ready Absolutely. to move forward. You haven't Absolutely. been healed enough. You haven't, you know, done enough stuff. You know, especially with people who have stayed in a bad relationship too long. Mm-hmm and have mm -hmm. finally cut loose and is able to come out, but they're not all out. Amen, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's important uh, that, uh, that, uh, um, that singles mm -hmm. or people who, and people who become single through divorce mm -hmm. understand that just as much as they know they had some things they need to work through. Mm -hmm. And being angry to say I'm through doesn't prove that you're through. Doesn't prove that you're through. You know, you have And why are you through? Right. Oh, and why are you still you, yeah. you asked that question mm -hmm. earlier. Why are you still angry? Mm -hmm. You know, and a whole lot of time we we try to encourage it's you know, if you're in a relationship too long and you leave after being angry and, and stuff and you're not leaving because you're you yeah. discovered your value, mm -hmm. you end up doing it, you're gonna repeat that yes. again. Yes. You're gonna repeat that you again. You either go back or repeat it again with another Absolutely. person, another name but the same situation. Absolutely. You're going to repeat that again. So now, uh, again, let's say this quick. Uh, we were, we're anxious. We want to work. We want to we want to uh, uh, have an opportunity to do this. If you're out there and you, you want to you want to ask a question on live, I don't know if you can write us a question or, or a statement that you want to come on live to ask a question, or you have to go out and come back again. Mm -hmm. Because every time someone comes in, uh, a, a, a thing comes up at the bottom of our screen. Bring them on camera. So you bring them on camera. Uh, so... Uh, whatever we have to do, uh, please uh, let, uh, we hope that someone will let us know. They want to come online to ask a question because we do want to try this out because we also want to be able, and we said this earlier when this when we first discovered that uh, this can be done, we want to bring on guests that will um, add some uh, add. some understanding or some, to some subjects that we will bring up. So um, hopefully someone will uh, uh, give us a, a uh, 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 drop us a line to say, we want to, I want to ask a question live. Because we want to see how this works. Okay, hon. Okay. When you rush into a romantic relationship, you, number one, say things that you don't mean. You make promises that you later realize that you cannot live with. Again, you know, when you're in a hurry to get to a relationship, uh, we, say whatever we, we, you we have say to whatever say. we have to say to get there. We tell, you know, you know I'm, I'm here with you. I don't care what happens. We're going to fight for this relationship. We're going to make sure. And then you realize that the person that you wanted to fight uh, uh, with, not against, about a relationship is truly fighting against a definition of relationship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and stuff, and you can't live up to that. Or you're not healthy enough to live up to what you uh, what you promised yes. because you're discovering the development of a relationship and the challenges that come with it. And, and it's just, some issues you're too. speaking what you want to be. Absolutely. And not what you are. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And in relationships, you have to be able to know that what you're saying, you can live up to it. And you have to fight in you. Somebody asked there. how long have we been married? Thirty six years. Thirty six years. She uh thirty six years ago, I um I walked into uh you know, <laughs> she came up to a church and stuff and she saw me and she looked at me and she said, uh, uh could you be could you be my husband? No. And I, I said No. I said, Yeah, huh? No such I thing. Said, yeah. I said, <laughs> That's not how I have <laughs> That no, is not no, how 30, I 36 years ago we met in um uh August. We met in August and uh, <laughs> got married in uh, October mm -hmm. and it's been 36 years. Yeah. Uh, so we thank God uh, for 36 years. Uh, it's, 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 it's. Now, now we're talking tonight about not rushing into 
to a relationship. That sounds like it's a contradiction, but it was God putting us Absolutely. together. Absolutely. When you know it's... That's the thing. I, I wasn't trying to... And she wasn't trying to nail me down yeah. because we were afraid that uh, we were losing something that we mm -hmm. weren't sure was ours. Mm -hmm. um, we did this because this was God's design. When I mean rush... When, when we talk about rush, and when I'm bringing up the emphasis about rush is when you're when you're forming a relationship mm -hmm. off of neediness, yes. and it makes you hairy yes. to a place that you know you can't survive in when you when you get there. You know, it wasn't about neediness. I didn't need you know I didn't need a caretaker. I didn't mm -hmm. need a babysitter. Mm -hmm. I didn't need someone mm -hmm. to make me whole mm -hmm. or complete. Mm -hmm. I needed someone to confirm exactly. what was in me. I needed yeah. someone to help encourage what was in me. But I certainly didn't need someone to make me something. She helped me to be the best husband, the best preacher, the best father that, that, I, that I could be. She helped me be that. Uh, but, um, you know, I, it, it wasn't that um, that's why I married her. I married her because this was God's design for our life. And those things came in as fringe benefits. So many times what happens is, Pastor Flowers, is, is that people are, are needy and they feel like, man, I got to have somebody but, beside me and, uh, and stuff. If I don't, yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Yeah. I don't know what I'm, where I'm going to go at and stuff. I don't know how, how I'm going to make it. And stuff, and that's the wrong. That's the wrong condition to have a relationship. Yeah, it is. They become the best thing in your life, mm -hmm. but you don't start off with them being the best thing in your life. They become the best thing in your life when you when you when you focus that this is the best thing in your life. Then you'll do things and you'll say things that you cannot live up to. And stuff. You know, sometimes when you're looking for somebody to do that much in your in your life, it's almost like putting an overdue burden on them. Absolutely. And when you don't accomplish the things that you hope to accomplish. Then you look cross-eyed at them because, in a sense, you thought maybe that they could help you get there. When in actuality, they're doing everything they can to support you to get there. Right. But that getting there has got to also be created in you. Yeah. So, you know, we have to make sure we're not putting too much of a burden on one another. Absolutely. Yes, we do, you know, help one another. Yes, we do. But we got to be able to step in there, too. You know, I like the uh, statement that uh, this sister just put up that just went by. She said, I used to get upset when my husband used to say, I don't need you. I want you, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and stuff. And the, the 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 mature part about that is is that uh, it's not that he you know that he can do without you. Mm -hmm. It's just that he's mature enough to show you how much he wants you. Mm -hmm. And when you find husbands and wives that are always on a need base with their spouse, you end up babysitting not just that relationship, yeah. but you end up babysitting yeah. the whole makeup of that person. Yeah. And you have to do more work to make sure that they understand you're in there with them and not their enemy. Mm -hmm. And then make sure also that they're in it and stuff, mm -hmm. then, it, then it's worth the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's an awesome mature stand that what husbands and wives realize. Now, and, 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 and understand this, from, a, from, a, from an emotional standpoint of view, you know, my investment mm -hmm. needs her, needs her here mm -hmm. uh, and stuff, but I want her here more than I need her. It's like when we say, a lot, I say a lot of times is, you know, some Christians say, I have to love you. Well, I don't want that love. No. I want the kind no. of love that you want, that to, you want to, because when I make you mad, that have to will realize, no, I don't. Mm -mm. That have to will treat me bad. Absolutely. So yeah. that, that was a good, awesome, mature statement. And I like the way. Uh, he said that. How did you know it was God's God's design? Because uh, not because of all that we've seen, mm -hmm. but all that He led. Mm -hmm. You know, God confirmed uh, when I when I saw her, and when she saw, and she couldn't help it though. Uh, but when God saw, when I saw her, um, I, you know, it was immediate God's approval mm -hmm. in my heart that this was my wife. Mm -hmm. um, she fainted when she saw me. She <laughs> she she just she just. No, you know, she said, and uh, that's not the truth. then I would have put some smelling sauce oh on, God. some sauce on, and she woke up. That is not the truth. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we knew, um, and that's the thing about getting into a relationship. Um, you don't go into a relationship without understanding the intimate cost with of hearing God, mm -hmm. and that is being sens sensitive, to, sensitive enough, I'm sorry. Sensitive enough to say, okay, God, this is about you guiding me. This is not about just, Trudy said, oh, how you don't Trudy? This is not just about, that's my woman or that's my wife. This is about, God, I need to hear you about your affirmation, about what I'm feeling. And if this feeling is right, mm -hmm. and God does it quickly. And we understood that when we met, because I'll tell you how I did, and I'm going to say this, and we're going to move on. We met, I think, two times before. 
Yeah, you know, uh, no, well, one time before we What's met, that? we met in December of 1981. Uh, we, I don't know, just Kim. You? <laughs> uh, we met in December of 1981, and I had came to the church with my sister, and service was over, and we were standing out in the in the little vestibule or whatever, and. My sister was talking. Yeah. I mean, she was talking with, 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 with your mom and your sisters. And see, like they just took forever. I was mm -hmm. ready to go home, man. And you were out there, had this big afro. She was ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> had this big afro. And, and, and I'm sitting there, and he told me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know, it's all my afro and stuff. You, you were looking at me, wasn't you? <laughs> go ahead. And, uh, but why had, you bring up the Afro? You know? Because it was I, it was big. I okay. didn't remember. Okay. You know, um, and, and and I was talking about how I was ready to go home, and you were talking about you were ready to go home, and you was talking about how when they get together, they don't know how to end the conversation, and so forth and so on. We met that December. Mm -hmm. Never met again until that nope. August. Nope. It was after we was married that I remember. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. We met before. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. But it just wasn't that time for God to bring us together. And this may sound strange, but there was no, no attraction. Connection. No attraction, none, no none, connection. None, none, was, none, not, none. That I, not that we thought each other was evil. Oh, no, not, no, it wasn't no, no, like no, that. No, 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 no. It was just like meet we someone. Was, we was talking and laughing, we were talking, you know. Yeah. But after you left, there was no lingering thing. No, no. There was no memory. There was nope. no lingering thing. There was nope. no... Oh, when have you got anybody? There was no when has she got anybody. It, it was no, none of that. No. But the next time we came together, it was like wow, and I did not even remember. Next time we saw each other. Yeah. Next, next time, time we saw, saw each other. other. We saw each other. <laughs> <Not good. laughs> no. Um, you know, I didn't remember. And then it was after we was married, and I was sitting down one day. It was like you know, I remember. I said I met him before. Yeah. You yeah. know. We we knew and and discerned the season. And we heard God's voice. It was quick. Yes. God wanted, yes. you know, God wanted to do a quick thing mm -hmm. and everything. And he and we heard him, and we knew it was him. It wasn't a guessing game. We we understood it was him because there was a connection between what God wanted for us, an intimate connection with what yes. God wanted for us. Because she didn't want none, and I didn't want no we didn't, no foolishness. Mm -hmm. And it was an intimate connection between what God wanted mm -hmm. and stuff. And when God said what he what he, he had didn't designed, want no foolishness, no. didn't want no drama. If you got to go into a relationship and right off the beginning there's foolishness and drama, you might want to keep it moving. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that and then now thirty six years later, working on years. a thirty seventh year, yeah. um, uh, we, we have we have been married and stuff and we're gonna see a hundred years. And been uh, dealing with relationships for the past Absolutely. twenty years. Absolutely. And we, and I, let me say this in all honesty, we, I was kidding a lot this while ago and I'm that's just the way I am. But we take this stuff seriously, oh, yeah. seriously. because uh, people get messed up yeah. in, in developing immature relationships yes. and calling it marriage. Yes. They get messed up uh, having someone come into their life that's not complete. And then you know what? Yeah. And to be honest, and, and, and we've said this before, they may be the right person, but the wrong season, mm -hmm. the wrong timing and stuff, and, 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 and promises that they can't live up to. And, and then there's some that are coming to your life and just string you along. Absolutely. Oh, we're going to get married. Oh, we're going to get married. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that wedding never, day never no. come and probably will never come. Nope. You know, and it's always where you get ready to leave, then they'll go get a ring. Absolutely. Or you get ready to leave or they'll try to give you a, 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 a wedding date. Those people are not ready for no. you. And you know, and, and your heart is there and your hope is there and your desire is there and you're hanging on there. Their indecisiveness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we wait for people to make a decision when we're the one that need to make Absolutely. the decision. Absolutely. We need to make the decision and say, you know what, I'm better than this. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you got to string me along, obviously I'm not the one. Absolutely. And please do not get caught up in any season mm -hmm. to make you feel like, not just, we, got, we, we were talking about, I wasn't going to mention the word, but uh, uh, whether it be Valentine's Day or Christmas. Or Halloween. Oh, <laughs> don't get no trick. <laughs> okay. You know, don't you look, like the trick. No, <laughs> no. So you know, just take take. It's worth taking your time to know that you got what God has, has designed Amen. for you. That's right. It's worth taking your time. That's right. it, it absolutely is. And when God and listen, God doesn't take a whole lot. It, God doesn't take a whole lot of time mm -hmm. 
for something that he's already made up his mind about. Don't have to. We just have to get in place to, know, to where God's mind is at. Mm -hmm. When God's mind is there, and somebody say, "But I've been waiting, I've been waiting for my husband and wife for years. I've been praying, seeking God for my husband and wife and stuff, and it and it just and it just haven't haven't arrived." Ask yourself this one question or two questions. Ask yourself first of all, have I have I enjoyed my my life with myself? Because if I haven't enjoyed my life, am I trying to rush me away from me? Am I trying to get yeah. someone else to occupy me away Why from myself? Why am I in this hurry? Absolutely. And if you're trying Who's to occupy yourself, you rushed. Yeah. If you're trying to occupy yourself away from yourself, what are you going to end up giving to that person that does find you that you do find? Wow. And you got to think about that, you know. And if you and, and if that is the case, that may be the reason why they have not come mm -hmm. because they're trying to find someone that enjoys who they are That's right. and will enjoy giving that joy to them That's right. as a husband or a wife. Mm -hmm. So that may be that may be the story. S secondly, is you may got to, got to make sure that you clear everything out of your life that makes it look like you're occupied. Amen. And that could be, and that, that not, and that's not just a person. That's not just another uh, a, a female if you're male, or another mm -hmm. male, a male if you're female. Mm -hmm. That's also with your own issues, your own insecurities, mm -hmm. your own struggles and stuff with your own self mm -hmm. and your own value. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody should be responsible for showing you how valuable you are that's right. because because you don't know it. Yeah. So those things are some of the things, and God may reveal other things to you. It's but so oh, how you don't. <laughs> she my friend now. Yes, she, right. she is. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But we got to know our own value because nobody wants to chase uh, uh, someone who has no value. Exactly. Because can I tell you something? If you don't know your own value, you will never be able to join the value of being found. No. Of don't don't let anyone else have to come in and tell you your value, you know, because it could be hooked to their emotional problems. Absolutely. Or their emotional yo-yo you. You know, up and down, up and down. When they're happy with you, you got great value. When they're not happy with you, then you ain't nothing to nobody. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Don't don't let nobody pull you like that. Don't let nobody yo yo your emotions like that. Absolutely. Listen, I I, I keep I, I want to say this one more time. Uh, I, I do want we want someone to uh, to come on. If, if, if oh, we ain't got much time left, but we was hoping that someone would come on so we can see how this thing works. Uh, with a question because we want to find out that because we want to be able to bring someone on uh, when we, when we uh, get there. So, but okay, Pastor, let's read a couple of more. Okay. We... Uh, when you rush into a romantic relationship, you make promises you can't keep. Absolutely. And the other person is looking for you to keep them promises because you promised it and they emotionally accepted it and they believe. Oh my God, my knight in shining armor going to put me in a house on a hill, a six bedroom house on a hill and so forth. And he's going to do it or she's going to, you know, t stop me from working and do all what have you, you know, Amen. whatever, whatever promise it was that you made to seal the deal. You know, Pat, you've got to be able. ready and able to do Pop. it and not just do it just to seal, say it, just Absolutely. to seal the deal. You know, um, hearing yourself in an emotional mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. And stuff is just like having a hurried conversation. Yeah. You know how when you talk to someone and they want to hurry up and yeah. talk, 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 talk. Don't get all the information. Or, or or they talk and you're trying to talk, but they can't hear you because they want to hurry up and get their car. Mm -hmm. Get out. When you're hearing yourself in a relationship, you say those. You say things. Mm -hmm. You say things that you can't live up to, and stuff. And you're not taking the time to find out if that person is saying anything in response. Mm -hmm. And then you go into that relationship after making all these promises in a hurry and realize that the only thing this relationship is defined on is what you said. What you said. Because they have promised you nothing. Mm -hmm. Because you were so busy trying to get out what you felt mm -hmm. and what you needed mm -hmm. that you didn't hear what they were willing to give and what they needed. Mm -hmm. So here you are in this relationship with a person and all the relationship is defined off of, and I need you to hear this, is what you said. And that's bad. What you promised. You did all the giving. Yep. And now. And they did all the receiving. Yes. And now when they require from you what you promised, you are looking for what they promised from you only to find out they promised nothing. They didn't promise nothing. And they tell you. Some will tell you. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell you that. Yeah. And some will tell you point blank. Well, I have some issues, emotional issues. I can't. I'm not going to tell you that I love you. I'm not going to tell you all of these here things because right now I can't even 
find myself. I don't even know what I'm what I'm dealing with myself. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? You need to leave them there. Absolutely. Trying to find themselves because if he's lost or she's lost, they're gonna get you lost. Or and about and it's another thing too, Pastor Flowers. If they have not discovered who they are, and they give you what you see there, yeah. when they do discover themselves, you may not like what they've mm -hmm. discovered and mm -hmm. what you find out they are. So the bottom line is, rushed relationships, rushed uh, uh, getting into a, 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 a level of yeah. intimacy, and I'm not talking about physically, mm -hmm. in a relationship, uh, it's, it's, it's dangerous. And you know, Apostle, some of the relationships like that where you're doing all the giving, you are nothing but a bridge. Absolutely. A bridge that they're crossing to get to the next. Absolutely. And when they get healed enough and get to the next, you probably won't be the one they Absolutely. choose. Absolutely. And that's sad because Absolutely. now you're left there broken. Because you was trying to help them get healed, and they got healed and kept it moving. And so, and so, so sometimes it's good to find out if you're if that's assignment uh, oh, or yeah. developing relationship. Yeah. And we've talked about it. We'll talk yeah. about it later. But that's the thing. You got some of these things, y'all. Sometimes the people that you you meet, broken at. people, they may just be a friend. They may be just a prayerful just assignment, assignment for you, and may not be somebody body that can walk up to or live up to uh, to uh, the qualities. That God has for you in a relationship mm -hmm. and especially in a marriage. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, honey. Okay. When you rush into a romantic relationship, when you rush into a romantic relationship, you dig a hole that's hard to get out of. Absolutely. You start making promises. You start uh, you start claiming things about yourself that you know you may not be, but you get so excited Rushed off of the it. off of the. Uh, uh, an, uh, an anticipation or an of idea being with somebody. of being with somebody, being a couple, and yes, and you start making couple, you start making couple promises, you start making uh, uh, calling statements. him your man, yes. calling her your woman, absolutely, and you realize that you done dug it's yourself into a relationship or into a connection with somebody mm -hmm. that's not there with you, mm -hmm. and it's hard to back up because guess what, you done told everybody else that that's your man. And now you're emotionally embarrassed as well as being physically or naturally embarrassed and stuff. And you don't know how to back out of this without feeling awfully bad and embarrassed and stuff. Mm -hmm. But bottom line is if you find yourself in there, back out, wipe back yourself out. off, and let That's God it. heal you and start That's over it. again. Don't let anybody, and I, I'm going to say this off, don't let anybody make you think that you have to be so embarrassed that you can't live off of a bad mistake about a relationship because you can. You can. You can. All right, a couple more. When you rush into a romantic relationship, you trust your feelings rather than the truth and there's some people who don't want to hear the truth absolutely they yes, don't sir. want to hear the truth he makes he, me he makes me feel happy yes she makes me feel happy but he don't want you absolutely or she don't want you he's using you or she's using you to get over thank or to you, get sister. across that bridge amen god bless you thank y'all for that encouragement oh, so they appreciate so it encouraging, yes. absolutely but can you read that one more time hon? i'm okay, sorry okay it says when you rush into a romantic relationship you Trust your feelings rather than the truth. I'm in love with her. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with him. But they're not in love with you. You know what, Pastor Flowers, when we're, when we're needy or when we're broken mm -hmm. and, and haven't taken the time to heal ourselves, when someone makes you, comes into your life and don't see, they don't seem threatening, yeah. and Casanovas, mm -hmm. people yeah. have a manipulative spirit. Yeah. People, people that can make you laugh. Yes. They, they will cause you to put your guards down and it will feel so good and safe. That you, you you just you just you just feel like you know I'm, I'm all right I feel good they make me happy they make me laugh they make me feel safe mm -hmm. they don't challenge me in anything they just they just love me whatever mistakes yeah. I made and I feel let, good yes let me show you something y'all nobody's gonna challenge you at the beginning of a relationship mm -hmm. especially if they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes and trying to trick you and stuff and stuff so what you start to do is instead of looking for the signs that that either mm -hmm. approves or disapproves you just seal the approval on how you feel. Mm -hmm. And then as the relationship starts to develop, you start to see certain things. And even those around you start to see certain things. Start to bring up certain things to yes. you. Start to show you where you're not being observant. There's things that's going on that you need to take a deeper look at that. Mm -hmm. You ignore that. You dismiss them because you go off of what you feel. Mm -hmm. Pastor Flight, that's a dangerous that's position to be. That's a dangerous position to be. Where your feelings lie to you and they're your feelings. And your feelings. They're your feelings. That's and you lie to your own self. Amen. And you're not a good steward of your own feelings yes. because you're putting your own self through that. And then after a while, we hear so many people say, I could have kicked my own butt. Mm -hmm. You know, after a while, you realize that a lot of that you did to your own self. Because in all honesty, there's sometimes people, they're not lying to you. Absolutely. It's what Absolutely. you're hoping for. Absolutely. That some Absolutely. people do, are lying to mm -hmm. you, but, you know. Some, but you're the key. Sometimes they're not lying to us. It's us lying to us. It's lying, us lying to our own self. 
believing that the relationship is more than what it is. Absolutely. It is what it is. And Absolutely. we have to be able to identify that it is what it is. Absolutely. And it may never get to what we're hoping it get to because that other person is not on that same page. Absolutely. With you. And never allow yourself to be put on an emotional layaway plan. Oh, my God. Where somebody to ask mm. you to wait for a while until I, I'm trying you know, until I get myself step. together. The bottom line is, is, is this. You knew when you first met, you understood the exchange that was going on. And you made me think that you that were together. You made me think that you were on, on board were about ready. a relationship. Mm -hmm. But when I started to uh, challenge you about a definition, mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you weren't together enough to get into the relationship. Mm -hmm. That should be a sign that this person is a liar. Mm -hmm. And if this person is a liar, you'll never be able to nail anything down that's going to be truthful, beneficial, or wholesome to you in any kind of relationship. I also had a question. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're in a relationship with somebody. Every time you turn around, it's another lie. Mm -hmm. A lie after a lie after a lie. And you ask them point blank to their face, X, Y, Z, this, 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 and this. Oh, no. Or oh, oh, whatever. And then you come up and it's nothing but another lie, another lie, another lie, another lie. Mm -hmm. And then you stay there. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you? That's it. That you said it. That's the problem. The problem is not a liar. They do what they do. Yeah, they're going to do what they do. But the problem is that you keep giving them opportunity to treat you like you're someone oh, that accepts a lie. God. That's true. You stay there. You let them. You say it's okay the way yeah. you treat me. It's okay. It's okay. okay. You just, actually just saying yeah. it's okay. Keep lying to me and apologize. Keep lying to me. And then take responsibility. Y'all, just because a person takes responsibility over an attempt to, attempt to deceive you doesn't mean they're willing to change, mm -hmm. especially if they continue to do it after they do that. Mm -hmm. So we, we got be more responsible, not just for the relationship, but be more responsible for yourself and where you're going from that relationship. When you take more responsibility for what you're going to do with yourself in this relationship, you'll make people, you'll require people to live up to that's something it. when that's they're it. in your life. Exactly. And stuff. You, and you can't treat me any old kind mm -mm. of way. Because no, I am somebody. I have value. And if you can't see my value, then you don't deserve me. Absolutely. Do I deserve you? You deserve me. Okay. <laughs> hey, but listen, we thank you for joining us. Our next broadcast, and I, I'm glad we got this calendar here because I can tell you, next broadcast is the 24th of this month at 7.30. Listen, can you, there. Yes, can you do us a favor, please? Can you share this mm -hmm. and uh, share this with somebody who um, who you feel will be a blessing to it, uh, um, buy it and stuff, and can you also share that we're here on uh, on Facebook Live? Uh, and stuff. We we appreciate it. if you would help us get this across. Yes. We want to get this out as far as uh, as we can. Um, we don't do this uh, do this because we want to be popular. Mm -hmm. We do this because it's our we, ministry. We, it's it's our our ministry. This is something that God has put in our hand, yeah. and we want it, Pastor. We just want to do it with yeah. all our heart, and we want to do it with everything that's in us. Because, and, and we're not saying this as a cliche. Sister, need asked a question. Okay, let, let me say this right quick. Sister, we'll get right to that question. You are. We feel that the body of Christ, you are important enough for yes. us to take the time to hear God, to bless and encourage you in your relationship. Yeah. Amen. What was she asked? I'm sorry. Um, is, uh, is this what, do you think, mm -hmm. what do you think about a person that tell you that you are all I want? Okay. What do you think about a person that tells you that you are all I want for and need and do... Uh, and do not see for two or three days uh, that you know, uh, you know they are are, are young. That you are okay. If I, if I can get the just of this is, uh, what do you do with a person that tells you uh, you all I need, you all I want, and then you don't see them for a couple of days? And so, um, let, let me. Um, how you don't marry? Yeah. Let, let, let me just say this, and I, I from this standpoint, mm -hmm. um, Trina, if, hey, Trina. hey, Trina. if 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 you're all, if someone that you claim is all you want and all you need or everything that you want in your life, um, if it's, they're telling you that, tell you that, yeah, they're lying. They're lying. Cause let me tell you something. Love you, baby. Um, I gotta live by. Uh, if I don't breathe, I'm gonna die. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to breathe. I'm going to do all I, all I can. I'm going to keep my breath going. If if you are someone in my life that I need, that I want, I'm going to keep finding the yes. space you're in yes. to breathe you into my life. Yeah. But here's 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 a, here's a sad... You're not going to be going so far from me that... Um, love you too, Trudy. Yes. You're not going to be going so far from me that, that you know, 
I'll begin to miss you, right. you know, so to speak. You don't call me, you don't come by, you don't come by and see me and all of those mm -hmm. things. Then there's something wrong with what you're saying. Absolutely. But here's a, here's a scary part about this, Pastor, I believe. Mm -hmm. That when you hear a person, whether it be a man or woman, that comes to you and says, you're all I want and all I need, you should be cautious about that. Yeah. Because one, how, what are you going to do if I disappoint you? And secondly, I have to be aware that you may be setting me up what for a spirit of control. Mm -hmm. You may be trying to set up for a spirit of control because you're now setting up the platform to make me responsible for your emotional health mm -hmm. and the part and 90% of this relationship to make sure you're safe or feeling good about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you never want to be all that somebody wants and all that somebody needs. You want to be a part of their life that they enjoy and that you and both discover that what you do and what you can do for one another. But if someone comes to you, and I don't mean to be jumbling up those words like I just did, but if you find someone that comes and, and, and early on or somewhere in a relationship that tells you, you're all I want and all I need, tell me what do you mean by that? Yeah. Now, if you say you're all I want and all I need, you mean you mean exclusively in a relationship without any involvement of any other female? Okay, I can understand that. But if you have no definition to what that includes, that it, that means that you, uh, uh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm your emotional energy, I'm your physical energy, I'm your spiritual energy, and you can't survive in those areas without me, then that's a dangerous position mm -hmm. because now you want to control yeah. and you want to manipulate yeah. and you want to make responsible things Almost that should be cagey. that should be yours. Yes, run from that kind of uh, don't, don't, commitment because yeah. it's not good. It's not healthy. Amen. All right. Listen uh, again. Uh, everybody thank everybody for joining. We thank you. Good question, Sister Sister Gina. Love you. Good to see you. Um, amen. Good job. Praise God. So listen again. Uh, please uh, share this. Uh, we'll be back again. And so much more that can be taught on this subject. Yes. And we certainly will be bringing more information to you on that subject. You know, a lot of times we had the singles. They'll say, "Well, you talk a lot to the married couples. Talk to the singles." Some we do talk to the singles, and there's a book specially. That designed for singles. Singles, are you ready? Absolutely. And I would suggest strongly, strongly that you will go to Amazon.com. Amen. And get that book and really, really evaluate yourself to see if you are ready. Or see if that person that you're thinking about, if Absolutely. they're ready. Absolutely. You know, um, one of the things, and I'm getting ready, we're going to close on this, and we'll deal more with this. And I remember this question. Um uh, on hopefully I, I'm gonna try to if, if, if Mary if you'll come back and please help me uh, one of the things we have to uh, do for ourselves is and this is for ourselves there can be experiences that we can have in our life yeah. that can do such damage and yeah. break us so deeply yeah. that uh, we find out that it feels like sometimes I can't move from it or whatever, whatever experience it is it doesn't have to always be a relationship but whatever experience in life and if it's in a relationship the same thing goes that it can hurt us so deeply that it sometimes feel like we can't go on. You're or that, in that yes, place. or that when I go on and I attempt, and here's the key thing: sometimes I think, Mary, what else? What else can happen to us as human beings? That sometimes we can't entrust, we can't even trust when it feels like I'm getting ready to enjoy life again. Yeah, I'm getting ready to get happy again. Yeah, what we have to do is you're afraid to be happy yes. because it may happen all over. Absolutely. Again. Or if you are happy, you're waiting for the next shooter. For Absolutely. Me. We've got to refuse to allow anything. To rob me mm -hmm. from any opportunity to go from this to yes. a place of happiness yes. again, and you know that, that that also deals with when we was talking about uh, the spirit of depression. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that's that same thing, but I'm saying what it talks about at the back. The subtitle is seeing the uh, uh, brightness of life again. Mm -hmm. And what we have to do is refuse to allow ex uh, experiences that try to be similar to the pain uh, mm -hmm. or the frustrations or the rejections that we have to trap us into that moment mm -hmm. and make us feel like and it's that okay we can't go beyond it. To allow yourself to love again. Absolutely. You know, just because you had a bad experience does not mean you have to cut off all of the love notes. Absolutely. You know, it's okay to allow it's okay yourself to enjoy to be life one again. again. Enjoy it. It's okay to allow yourself to love again. Absolutely. Without reservation and without fear. Absolutely. And stuff. Uh, so uh, it, it's it we, we there there are times uh Absolutely. 
And that's what we were talking about. Absolutely. It doesn't always, it's not always about, a, about another human being. And that's why we were saying sometimes it's just about life. It's yes. not, it's about how the things that have happened in our life that sometimes freezes us or yes. causes us to not yeah. trust or not feel comfortable in the yeah. course of life. But what we've got to do is take control over every moment in our life and say, I'm going to capture things back yeah. and I'm going to see the, I'm going to see the value of life from me again. And I'm going to, I'm going to reclaim uh, uh, um, um, every every space of joy, every space of gladness, every space of value uh, that makes me feel uh, strong, valuable, whole, happy, mm -hmm. uh, trusting, trusting myself. You gotta again. come out that cocoon. You know, so you know, and that's that's the thing. And you're after, and that's what we were saying. You're absolutely right. It's not always about another human being. It's not mm -hmm. always about. Sometimes it's just about life. Yeah. But we cannot, we cannot, at any level, allow life. To make us feel like I'm frozen in time. Yeah. I'm I'm too afraid to to, yeah. to feel happy. I don't trust happiness, yeah. or I don't trust joy, and stuff. And we we've got to be able to capture it and say, I'm gonna take back me again. Uh, we uh, um, we we wrote a, a little thing called uh, 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 recovering myself, mm -hmm. talking about the resilience, mm -hmm. and it talks about how to capture yourself mm -hmm. again and take back your joy, take back you, take back your peace, and make yourself whole. Take again. back you, absolutely, and live life and enjoy absolutely. life. So. Enjoy life. Love you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for joining us. Please yes. keep us in your prayers. Join us again on the twenty on the twenty fourth at seven thirty here on Facebook Live, where we'll be back again for another uh, uh, Facebook program. God bless you. God bless we do you. love and appreciate you.